This is Johnny with Tiger Bomb MMA, and tonight I'll be going over UFC Fight Night Lewis versus Spivak, giving you my thoughts and predictions on the entire card. Pretty much a low effort day for me. Didn't feel like getting any pictures or anything like that. Jose's not going to be joining me today. Uh, after UFC 281, I'm like, I'm going to take some fucking time off because I had too much fun. I went to a movie theater to watch the, the fights, the main card. It was pretty dope. I know a lot of people don't know about that. Like in certain areas, you, you'll get the opportunity, depending on where you are in the United States, for example, there's certain spots where you can actually go watch the fights in a movie theater. It's like 20 bucks a ticket. It's worth it. It's awesome. You have it on a big ass screen. And when you're the first guy, like, I don't know if you guys watch John Boy sports, uh, like it's a baseball breakdown, but they break down the first guy to like get up off their seat when a home run is hit. I was the first fucking guy to get out of my seat when Adesanya was getting his ass knocked out. It was like, oh my God. Like, I had predicted the fourth round, but the fifth round was good enough for me. And great, great night. Great night. Absolutely. Like, um, other than that, you know, heartbreaking news about Anthony Rumble Johnson dying. That was unexpected. Um, yeah, kind of sucks. It's kind of like the, the name of the game these days, like unexpected deaths from these athletes like first Elias Yadoru and now Anthony Rumble Johnson. The one, the one that I remember that actually like kind of sucked the first time I heard of a fighter passing away was Ryan Jimmo. Like he got hit by a car, kind of like a hit and run. And I'm, that one really sucked too. So like rest in peace, Rumble Johnson. Like I didn't meet the guy, but I, <laughs> I try to pull one of those, like he's standing right there and I try to jump in kind of like Connor and, uh, and chocolate Al chocolate Dell. And uh, dude is absolutely massive. I to this day, like I know we've said it before, how the fuck did he make Walter weight? But literally, how the fuck did he make Walter weight? But enough of that. Let's get started with the with the card. As I mentioned again, it's a low effort day for me, so we're doing tapology. But first fight of the night, we've got flyweight uh, Natalia Silva versus Teresa Belda. Now Belda, I didn't know too much about. I remember watching her fight during the Contender Series. She's twenty years old. She is, what, plus 150 currently, according to Tapology, minus 185 for Silva. But back to Teresa Belda. She's tall, right? She's a big girl. She is pretty damn strong. Watching her footage, like, not necessarily her tape, because her tape's kind of goofy. Like, it's really hard to gauge her tape watch, right? She doesn't look very good, but that doesn't really matter when it comes to women's MMA. It sometimes just takes that one X factor, like, her overall strength. But when watching like her YouTube, not her YouTube, her uh, Instagram videos, like she is putting in some work, right? She's putting in work when it comes to like going for takedowns. Like they're, she's a strong girl. My biggest concern with this one, because Natalia Silva, she is, she's just incredibly skilled. She's the much more skilled fighter. She's technically the better fighter, but it doesn't mean, that doesn't mean shit when it comes to women's MMA. Like the better fighter doesn't always win. She's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, Silva, that is a uh, black belt in taekwondo. And what sucks about this girl, because I, I picked against her versus Jazz Divisius, she looked night and day different from Tape Watch and her UFC debut. I was like, God damn, that sucks. Because she looked fantastic. Excellent footwork. You know, everything that she was doing in that fight was impressive as hell for a 25-year-old girl. I think she should win this fight, right? At minus 185, it's, it's kind of scary just because, again... Sometimes the big brooding, you know, Czech Republic, the Czech woman will come in here and just dump her on her head. And granted, Silva, she's got a good arm bar. Her jujitsu's decent. You know, we haven't seen it too much because she, you know, likes to say it on the feet. What worries me is that if if Silva, or not Silva, but Blades, uh, God damn it, Teresa Belda, I keep getting her name wrong. If Belda can just get some top control, enough top control, this could be one of those fights where Silva literally wins the fight easily but she still loses the split decision just because of the top control like that's what i'm worried about the most so i won't be touching it i do think though i'll go with the more skilled fighter in silva very very skilled on the feet just that she does kind of fight like she, she has kind of like that karate defense you know pulls her head way back hands down you know she gets away with a lot of shit not to say that belda is going to be you know pushing the action with the with the you know, striking. I don't think her striking's there that yet. She's pretty pretty fucking slow. Uh, one of two ways this fight goes. Silva does her Silva best. She does like actually find if I'm wearing a Machida karate shirt. She pulls one of those type of 
fights. Uh, one of those performances where she just kind of moves a lot. She she bounces off the cage, avoids any takedowns from Belda, and makes it look really easy. Or Belda makes it sloppy, which I think she will do, and it's going to be really close because of that. I'm going to stay away from it, but I'll go with Silva by the decision. I wouldn't put it out of the realm of possibility of, uh, of a submission like an arm bar, uh, but again, Belda's really fucking strong and really big for that, for that division, for a flyweight. So I'll go with uh, Silva, mainly because she's the more skilled fighter. Now, moving on, we've got Fernie Garcia versus Brady High Stand. I like this fight. I like this fight a lot. We've got Garcia being the favorite minus 150 comeback on he stand plus 125. I'm just going to flat out say it. I'm going with he stand on this one. Um, the main factor with he stand is that he fought, in my opinion, the best version of Ricky Tercios. And watching that fight back, it was like a, a double header, right? Because Tercios is on this card. And you're watching that fight because they're both fighting. You're tape watching both. What do each each bring to the table? That relentless pressure from Heastan, that relentless willingness to go for the takedown. I love about this guy, right? He's very young, 23 years old, 5'8". Uh, he's got power in his hands too. Like going back and watching his fights in the contender series, contender series in the uh, tough tough house. He he was knocking dudes out. He was hurting dudes with the hands. So he's got power in the punches. It's just that knowing that he has that reliability with the wrestling, the cardio to keep going, right? Ricky didn't make it easy for him. I think he's going to make it look pretty easy against Fernie Garcia. The biggest takeaway about Fernie is that his boxing is really, really fucking clean. He doesn't throw a whole ton of kicks, though. So I'm, I'm not too like worried about him really gauging distance all that too well against Brady Heaston. Again, his hands are phenomenal, phenomenally fast. But other than that, he's kind of a slow guy. Like he plots forward. Uh, really, the fastest thing about this guy is his hands, and he has to worry. Yeah, I guess Brady has to worry about that the most. Fuck, I got something in my fucking eye. Other than that, though, I think he stand just spams takedowns right at plus one twenty five. Even if he gets knocked out, he's a pretty durable guy. Like I've I've seen this guy obviously go three rounds with Ricky Tercios. I I really kind of believe the hype behind this kid. I didn't like him in the in the tough house. Watching how relentless he can be with those takedowns, like he, he does some really clever shit in there. Like he's very skilled, even for 23 years old. And of course, coming out of Spokane, he's training with Kiesa. I I just think that time away since losing the Ultimate Fighter is going to really shine here. Like if Fernie comes out here and gets takedowns of his own, that'd be impressive. I don't think he'll take him down, but if, if Fernie displays some new skill set, right? Because so far, he's just boxing, right? He can surprise me, but I took Journey Newsome to beat him, and he he didn't necessarily necessarily make it look easy, but he made it look like a smart fucking bet because he was like plus something. I can't remember what I took him at, but I was pretty happy with that bet. Uh, Fernie, you know, if you can outspeed him, you cannot beat him. So I'm going to go with the uh, he stand. I'm going to say realistically, I think he can take him down and submit him. He's, he's got some good subs. So I'll go with he's standing round number two. Round number one, you know, he's been away for a while, what, a year and two months. I think he might be a little rusty, but come round number two, maybe he gets hit, dives to the legs, gets that takedown, and then eventually moves on to mount, or maybe gets an arm triangle. So I'll go round number two, he stand, arm triangle. Next bout, straw weight bout, we've got Maria Oliveira versus Vanessa Demopoulos. Odds currently have it in favor of Oliveira, minus 120. Come back on Demopoulos, plus 100. Damn, Demopoulos is 34, huh? And Maria Oliveira is 25. To break this one down as quickly as I can, because this one's going to be a, a fucking slot fest. One moment. I had no idea that uh, Demopoulos was at fight ready, because she does not look ready to fight. Um, I will admit, though... Like I've got a bias against Demopolis. I've never liked the girl, but I know when to pick my spots with her. She's kind of a sub or bust, even in her fight against Jin Yu Fry. Like I thought she lost that fight. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't go back and rewatch it. I didn't want to watch that garbage. But to me, it looked like she she's getting better with the striking. She's not as confident in her striking. She does possess some power on the feet, but her bread and butter is the jujitsu. It's that's that simple. If she can get a takedown, you know, it, it's worth a shot taking her as a as a sub prop. 
but in this particular fight, Maria Oliveira, she's a purple belt in jujitsu. She's not great at all. She's not that great as a fighter, but she's aggressive. She's tall. She hits relatively hard. She looks like she's winning, and I think that's all I need to know. <laughs> that's what the judges saw in her fight against Gloria de Paula. Uh, it just looked like she was winning. And in this fight, she's going to have significant advantages, like right? five foot six compared to five foot two of Demopolis having the what four inch reach disadvantage or height disadvantage and the holy shit, seven inch reach disadvantage. Uh, to me, this one's pretty simple. Oliveira for me. Um, Minus 120 is not even that bad. Like, I'm willing to take a shot on Oliveira. But again, it, it's going to be a slot fest. So I'll stay away from it. If you got Demopolis, I'm not going to blame you because, again, it's it's a 50-50 matchup, in my opinion. And hopefully they are in the 50-50 position, and hopefully they do not fall in love because that would be awkward. But I will go with Maria Oliveira by, I'm going to say, see, TKO, it's rough to gauge because, yeah, I think she does possess the power, but Demopolis is pretty fucking durable. Like, Lupi Godinez was fucking her up back in the LFA, and uh, she didn't go down. So I'll say decision, and I mean barely, barely a decision. It, it could even be a split. Next bout, we've got this fucking asshole, Ricky Tercios, versus, oh, wow, I haven't seen this motherfucker in a while, uh, Kevin Natividad, quicksand. Natividad has had a rough time in the UFC. Like, he, he comes in, he fights Miles Johns, and I remember that specifically because I was in, I think, the Boston area driving around like the Northeast and I was in Boston. I was outside of fucking Best Buy and I was about to drive back to Maine. That's where I was like staying at. And I see Miles Johns grab his glove and then uppercut him. And he does like the weirdest, like glitchiest knockout. I'm like, damn, that sucks for him. And, uh, and you know, the not bad girl fucked him up and he's a plus plus one twenty five. That would mean, Minus 150 for Ricky Tercios. I think Ricky Tercios, it's it's a steal. It's a good bargain. He's a much better fighter. It's just that you, we saw what happened last time. He, God damn, he fought like a fucking idiot. Like, like ah. the best way I can describe how he fought, it's almost as if he used all of his hype juice and hype juice being the, the essence of his soul that allows him to fight to the best of his ability, like he used it up all against Brady Highstand. And then he had to replenish his hype juice against Eamon Zahabi. And by doing so, he had to spam like the taunt button. The ha! <laughs> I'm like, you fucking cocksucker, for real. He did not fight that fight. He literally just, I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know if he was high out of his mind, but he didn't fight. That, that was not a good performance by him. Uh, was it as bad as Prince of Peru, Claudio Boyas? Not particularly. He, he didn't scoot on his ass. He at least tried to fight slightly, but he didn't fight. I do think, though, if Ricky Tercios shows up here, it's going to be a bargain. Minus 150 for a much better fighter. I mean, he's good everywhere, right? Like, he's got the jiu-jitsu black belt. He, he's got good defensive and offensive wrestling. His submission game is good. Uh, striking, it's not terrible he, he can tighten some things up but i think he's going to be the better fighter here he's going to be the taller guy longer guy it's just i know a lot of people are you know they're feeling that like burn from the last fight he should have beaten Naaman zahabi but he just pussied out i don't even think it was just that he pussied out or he was afraid it was just that he was uh i don't know what was wrong with the guy i don't even give a shit but i will take Tercios, he should, and I mean, he absolutely should win this one by submission. Like, he should just take him down, choke him out. I'll say round number two because I'm giving him one round to get all that stupid bullshit out, all the taunts out. Maybe he has to build up that meter. Uh, so I'll go with Tercios round number two submission. Speaking of Miles Johns, here we've got Miles Johns making his comeback again after a vicious ass whooping by John Castaneda against Vince Morales. So, one thing about Miles Johns, well, actually, let me read the odds. He's at minus 145. Vince Morales, plus 115. I like Miles Johns in this one. The issue, though, and if you're superstitious, Miles Johns is only lost to Mexican fighters. So let's look. He lost to Mario Bautista, Mexican dude, and John Castaneda, also a Mexican dude. But what I've noticed about this matchup, right, Vince Morales, he's not a pressure guy. He doesn't necessarily put pressure on you. 
he he hits hard. He's got decent striking, good kicks. You know, he, he's a solid fighter, right? He he can definitely win this matchup. It's just it's going to be pushing himself out of his comfort zone for this. He would have to like catch Miles either in the clinch with where he failed the takedown or him coming in essentially countering him. And I don't think he's fast enough to to catch Miles. I think he, Miles would have learned from his last fight against John Castaneda. John Castaneda really pressured him. And that's the thing I know about Miles Johns. He doesn't like being pressured. And I don't think Vince is capable of smart pressure. Like Castaneda was putting smart pressure on him. Vince might put pressure, but it, it might not be intelligent pressure. It just could be chasing Miles Johns. And I think that's what Miles Johns is going to want, right? If you chase him, he's going to counter attack because he's very fast, very explosive. He's got the good wrestling. And I think he wins this one. Like how he wins it, I'm not sure. Uh, fuck it, I'll go with decision because I think he's he's much better than Vince Morales. It's just more so the confidence in in Miles Johns. Is he going to look at him coming out with a Mexican flag and a Mexican flag mouth guard? He's going to be like, not again. <laughs> oh fuck. So we'll see. We'll see. This could play out kind of like uh, I haven't seen the movie yet, but Black Panther: Wakanda Forever, aka the way I call it, Black Panther: Race Wars. Uh, so I don't know if the Mexicans won in that one, but I'll I'll go with uh, Miles Johns to wrap Wakanda and beat Namor the Submariner on this one or whatever the fuck they call him in the movie. But I'll, I like Johns on this one quite a bit. It's just again you got to be weary of your spots on on Miles Johns if you think he's gonna fuck up here. If you believe in that uh, deficiency to uh, beans and rice, uh, we'll see. But I'll go with Miles Johns by decision. Interesting, but Jennifer Maya versus uh, Marina Morose. I've I've thought really long on hard on this one because I I look at the price tag on Marina Morose minus one seventy five, and I question it quite a bit. I do question it because she comes back after a long layoff, and she beats a girl who I don't think she's even in the UFC anymore. A girl that realistically she could easily beat. Uh, realistically, Jennifer Maya would finish in the first round. And Maria Agapova. So her looking that good against Agapova, I don't know if that warrants her to be nearly a minus 200 against Jennifer Maya, a woman who has fought much tougher competition as of late. Like, let's look, Valentina Shevchenko went to a decision with her. She looked pretty decent. She took a round from Valentina, Jessica I, whatever, but she lost to Chukagin, which, you know, it's expected. And she lost to Manon Fioro, who is quite possibly the next in line for. Valentina at plus 150, taking a woman like Jennifer Maya, who's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, she won't get bullied on the ground by Marina Moroz. Uh, she won't get bullied on the feet because she's she's pretty she's pretty good on the feet. Her, her Muay Thai is getting improved. I think she's going to possess some more power. It's more so the, the footwork and the speed of Moroz that could lead to another decision, another loss to like, you know, the, the two blondes in the division. Uh, but I'm willing to find out. I'm willing to take a shot on Jennifer Maya. I, I think at that price tag, she can definitely win this one. I think she's going to be the more dangerous fighter here. I think she's going to possess the more power, the more titty power, and uh, the submission skill. For sure, she's not going to get submitted. She might get knocked out. I doubt it, though. Her fighting the two, she had three top strikers in that division. She didn't get knocked out. She didn't look out class completely. I don't think Moroz is going to really possess that kind of threat to knock her out. But it is what it is. You know, you never know. I'll take Jennifer Maya, though. I'll, I take her by decision. I almost went a little Brazilian there. I take Maya by decision. Um, I don't know, man. I just don't. I don't see the warrant for minus 175 for Moroz. It's just kind of fishy to me. So I will be placing a bet on Jennifer Maya to win this one at plus 150 odds. That's beautiful. Next bout, we've got Zalgas Zumagulov versus Charles Energy Johnson. This one. It baffles me a little bit, to be honest, because I'm taking Charles Johnson. I'm taking him by third round TKO. He's got great cardio and, you know, he's he's ever improving. His, you know, UFC debut wasn't the best, but he survived a very tough Mokhaev. And he's going to have the overall advantages here. He's going to have the cardio advantage. He's going to have the, the height advantage, the reach advantage, you know, height by five inches, reach by four inches it's more so the speed advantage that i'm i'm giving to zalgas he's going to be a little bit more zippy but i think charles has the better boxing 
quite possibly the better defense. It's just it's August. I, I think the pace that energy is going to put on them in that later round in round number three is going to be, it's going to be the deciding factor. I, I think the first two rounds might be relatively close, it might be split, might be like, we have no idea who's winning those two rounds, but the third round, I think Charles Johnson is going to really pour it on them. I think that's going to be a, a beautiful performance. Like I think Charles Johnson's one of those guys, like he's done it in the LFA. He did it against, what was his name? Mota, Charles Mota, Carlos Mota. He waited until like the fourth round to actually put it on him, and he put it the fuck on him, and he put him out of there. So I, I think he'll do the same thing here. Like shit, I I figure Charles Johnson's the type of guy that'll like get hooked up by skinny bets, if you know what I mean, and he'd be like, "Yo, dude, uh, knock him out in the third round for me. That's better odds." I think he's willing to do that shit. I'll go with Charles Johnson round number three TKO. So I guess again, he's he's a good fighter. He's a very tough fighter, very well rounded himself. Uh, but yeah, I think it's it's time for, for for him to retire and go spend uh, time with his multiple wives. So I'll go with Charles Johnson, round number three TKO. Ooh, baby, Jack Della Maddalena versus Danny Hot Chocolate Roberts. This is the is this the opener of the main card? Yeah, it is, baby. That's a beautiful one. So this one, you know. Jack Della minus four fifty. He's outpriced right now. You, I wouldn't take him. You you have to go with a prop bet. You could put him in parlays against Hot Chocolate. Danny Roberts is a he's a well rounded fighter. He's a great fighter. It's just that he's facing a guy who is probably going to knock him the fuck out. Uh, he's currently plus three forty. It's it's a it's an interesting battle. Like I don't want to put all my eggs in the Jack Della basket, just because it, this could be a very tough fight for Jack Della Madalena. Like I, I know he it it seems as if he should just go in here and knock him out. Danny Roberts is a veteran, right? Like he knows how to fight, he knows how to win, he knows how to wrestle himself. It's just that to me, the reason I'm going with Jack Della and why I feel slightly confident in the knockout prop. Like as of late, you know, Danny Roberts, we know he's been knocked out multiple times. He's, he doesn't have the best chin. Jack Della should find it, but I'm worried that he won't. You know, I'm worried that maybe Danny Roberts is going to be a little tentative. He's going to be skirting around. He's going to try to win this fight by not necessarily fighting. And Jack Della is going to have to, you know, push the pressure. You know, Jack Della has shown high fight IQ. He's shown incredible well roundedness. I, I just don't want to put all my eggs in that basket, though, so I won't be putting them on all, all my parlays. I'll take maybe a single shot on him by knockout because I, I do fully expect him to knock him out. I would say round number two. Yeah, because when Jack Dell lets those hands go, dear God, he is an absolute monster. Like I don't know if I have to explain to you how good Jack Dell Madalena is, but his, his boxing is phenomenal. He seems like the most complete UFC fighter making a come up right now. Like He doesn't seem to have any real flaws possibly possibly needs to tighten up the the boxing defense a little bit but we haven't seen that oh we got to be weary about this has he improved on that like i don't want to expect him to be perfect essentially and then danny roberts proves to us that like oh shit he has trouble with long rangy strikers because that's what danny roberts is he's long rangy he's a veteran he can mix things up and i do worry about that just to kind of give you my thoughts on it but yeah I've got what the fuck? Why did I have Danny Roberts? Fuck that! I've got Jack Della Madalena round number two TKO should happen, but sometimes things that should happen don't end up happening. Which there's a certain fighter up here that I will, I will prove to you that that's not the case. This fight right here, welterweight bout Muslim Salika versus Andre Fialo, and currently the odds have it. Fuck every fight has been relatively close. Like certain lines that I think are going to be out of this world are. Much closer. We've got Andre Fiala plus 110, uh, King of Kung Fu, Muslim Salikov minus 130. And this one, I don't think it's going to go the distance. One of these guys is getting knocked out. Like it, it'll cover you because Andre Fiala's chin is kind of super suspect right now. Like him getting hurt by that Vanderkamp fellow, Cameron Vanderkamp, was, was concerning. Now, what I will add, Muslim Salikov, he's what, 38 years old. He got knocked out by the leech. Great boxer in the leech, good movement by him. Salikov is he's he's a step behind. Like he he's definitely a great fighter. He still has it, but for how long? Right? How many rounds can he keep going? Like I, I think he does slow down after a round and a half. 
And if Andre Fialo is very careful, I think he can catch him. I'm going to go with Fialo. And the main reason for it is that taking a guy with that good of striking, he's a great striker, um, more so a boxer. He doesn't throw kicks, as I mentioned before. Uh, he thinks kicks are for uh, homosexuals. And he throws them here or there, but we all know what he thinks. So Andre Fialo, plus 110 after getting knocked out by Jake Matthews. Here's what Jake Matthews has that Muslim Salikov doesn't have. Fucking speed. I don't blame Fialo for getting knocked out by James, uh, Jake Matthews. <laughs> oh, my God. Jake Matthews came back like a different fighter with those hands. Like He was throwing combinations incredibly fast. And Fialo is not the fastest guy, but I think he is faster than Salikov. And, you know, against Matthews, Matthews just cracked him incredibly hard. He didn't see those punches coming, and he put him out. And I don't blame him for that. Like, Matthews is one of these guys that he's very, very good. He keeps getting better, but he always meets, like, a like a, a brick wall in a specific fighter. Like, right now, he looks pretty good, in my opinion, like maybe top 10. Like, he could be fighting the top 10, but he'll fight someone in the top 10 that'll just fuck him up, and then he'll have to regroup. Uh, but I, I, I think very highly of, on Jake Matthews. But in this fight, I think Andre Fialo, I think he's really live for a knockout. Again, Salikov, he's going to be throwing his spins, his kicks. If Fialo's very responsible with his defense, I think he eventually cracks Muslim Salikov and puts him out. Uh, the way that Jing Liang knocked him out, it it's, I don't know, I, I don't want to speculate, but it almost seemed like he was ready to get out of there. I think uh, Andre could put him in that position with some very intelligent uh, pressure in the second round. In the first round, it's going to be too tough because, you know, Salikov's going to be very fresh. He's going to be able to throw the spinning back kicks. Round number two, different story. And I think that's where Fialo either hurts him, that leads into the finish, potentially hurts him so bad that he has to finish him in the, in the third round. But I at least know that he'll connect in the second round. So I'll go Andre Fialo, second round TKO. This fucking fight, <laughs> heavyweight bout. We've got Chase Vanilla Gorilla Sherman versus Waldo Cortez Salsa Boy Acosta. Acosta, well, he didn't cost me the fight. That idiot, uh, Jared Vandera, he cost me some fucking money. I thought Vandera, Jesus Christ, if I see Vandera fight in the UFC again, I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. He should not be in the UFC. Like, not because I'm, like, mad at him. Not because, like, oh, my God, this guy sucks. He needs to, like, I'm doing, I'm, I'm saying this for his well-being. He needs to get better and fight some fucking people outside the UFC. He's not ready for this shit yet. Like, he he has the fucking tools. He just is a moron. Uh, in this fight, though, with Chase Sherman, like, all I'm going to say, well, how long ago was that? It was a fucking week ago that wasn't a week ago that he fought bandera's on halloween weekend god damn so those kicks that he took from bandera say what you will fucking hurt you just knew like he was not the same fighter after some kicks chase sherman knows that chase sherman also has very good low kicks very very good low kicks he is a plus 170 underdog against costa right now who is a minus 200 if we're being honest man acosta is not all that impressive He's got the ability to get better, but he just seems a little, like, scrubby to me, right? We know Chase Sherman's a fucking scrub, but he's a scrub to the fucking stars. Let's take a look. He lost to Romanov. No fucking shit. He lost to Jay Collier. Let's not talk about that one. He lost to Parker Porter, the future champ. He beat uh, John Jones, remember? And Andre Olofsky. That one really sucked because a lot of people were on Chase Sherman, and you saw him mentally break in there. I don't think... I don't think Acosta is going to have that kind of ability on Chase Sherman. I think Chase Sherman, he's live for a finish here. I think he's going to attack the legs incredibly hard. Yeah, fuck, say what you will, man. Those legs are not going to be 100% from Acosta. I think a couple of those low kicks on that like lead leg are going to hurt. You take away the base. He's not going to be able to throw those punches. He's primarily a boxer. And, you know, Chase Sherman, from what I was told, when he fought Romanov, he's been working on his wrestling he is not as stupid as Vandera, even though he was losing to Vandera. It's a weird inception type bullshit, but I'm going to take Chase Sherman. You've got to be an idiot not to take Chase Sherman. <laughs> I'll be saying that as he's getting his has pounded in by Acosta in the first round. Uh, but I'm, I'm taking Chase Sherman by TKO. I'm going to say, 
didn't say second round. I think it's going to take at least one good leg kick to really rock the ship out of Acosta. And then after that, I think Chase Sherman will gradually take over. Here's the thing, though, about Chase Sherman. Like, I, my background is in like psychology. And when I tell you, I don't practice this shit anymore. But when I'm telling you, man, I've seen Chase Sherman's fucking face in some of his fights. And I know exactly what he's thinking of. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know how to win this fight. I can't believe I'm here. I'm tired. I want to go home. I've seen that in his face. If I see that shit again, like I, at least I know I got a good value on him, but just be wary on, on Chase Sherman. Don't go too nuts on him. But yeah, it's just Jesus Christ. Don't fuck me this time, Chase Sherman. Uh, second round TKO. Next bout, Ian Kutulaba versus Kennedy and Zetchiku and Zetchiku, African Savage versus the Hulk. And this fight, Kennedy minus 170, come back on Kutulaba, uh, plus 145. This one's a tough one for Kuntalabia. Uh, just because Kennedy, fuck, Kennedy is such a goofy fighter. Like, he's such a nice guy i like kennedy a lot like he seems like a very nice respectable young man and you know he's so good to his mother and on top of that he's got physical attributes up the ass he's incredibly big he hits hard he's relatively durable he's not the brightest guy though i've taken this guy on a couple different situations and it paid off big time i took him against that cocksucker olberg paid off plus 200 took him against that piece of shit marquez the worst best fighter in the UFC at the time and fucked him up. And then the Un Jung kind of hit him with an elbow that didn't even touch him and he fell down. And then Negu Mariano. Now, granted, I took Negu Mariano at plus 200, which is like my favorite number for betting these assholes. And Kennedy kind of let Negu Mariano lead that fight and take it away from him. The biggest issues with Kennedy is that he's kind of prone to make dumbass mistakes like poking, uh, nut shots. Damn, it just it's so hard because he's training with Fortis. They're a good camp, and it sometimes feels like he doesn't listen or he's not all there. Like all the training in 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 the in the gym is just like, oh my god, this guy looks like a killer. But when he's out there, he turns into like a you know those memes where it's like, where's the dog in him? Like he's still got the dog in him, but it's like a much smaller, less intimidating dog. Opposed to when he's in the gym, he's an absolute savage. Kutulaba seems to be the opposite. Like, he seems to be a guy that, like, puts on that front of, like, I'm going to kill you. And then he's in the cage, and he's like, I don't want to be here anymore. Like, he's done that a couple times. Like, he did that with Ryan Spann, got choked out, and he did that with Johnny Walker. Like, he should be knocking these guys out. But I said earlier, there's certain guys that, like Jack Della, as I mentioned, things are so fucking obvious. He should beat these guys, but he doesn't because – whatever X factor we find out that he, I don't know. He loses the black guys in this situation for that particular reason. I'm taking Kennedy. I don't think Ian's going to have the same success with the grappling, whether it was temporarily against like Johnny Walker or, you know, same thing with the uh, Ryan span. Like he, he got scrambled and then he got choked out with Kennedy. Like I at least know he has been working on his own wrestling He's a big boy. He's a big boy. Six foot five compared to the six foot one. Uh, I don't know how Eon's going to close that distance. He's going to have to go ballistic. And even if he takes Kennedy down, and here's why I'm worried about this whole fight. If he takes Kennedy down, Kennedy should have his long legs like post, post on the hips and then kind of push him away. But I do worry that Kennedy's going to like illegally upkick him or something, you know? That that does worry me. So, like, if you take a prop of, like, will there be a point deduction? Both of these guys are kind of known to go a little ham in there with the with the fouls. More so Kennedy, but I can see Eon kind of throwing a knee when Kennedy's getting up because he's so big. It's going to give the perception of him being on all, like, he's getting up, but he's actually on his knees. Uh, this fight being the co-main event, it's going to be fun, but it's, like, it's so worrisome. I don't think it'll go the distance more so Kennedy's chin is kind of questionable and Eon, you know, I think once he gets put in trouble, he's the bully who gets, you know, stood up to and he, he easily folds. 
Eon absolutely needs this fight. I think he can go ballistic in there, hulk out on Kennedy and knock him out. But if Kennedy like fights smart, maybe pokes him in the eyes a couple times, he should be able to win this fight. I'm going to go with Kennedy. I say a second round TKO. The first round, Kutalaba, if he fights smart, he's going to wrestle. Second round, he's going to slow down. Kennedy's going to take over and maybe even get a takedown of his own. If he starts taking dudes down consistently and ground and pounding them like he did against Carl Roberson, he's going to be a fun guy to watch and keep an eye on, whether he'll be like top 20, top 15, maybe, maybe. What is he, top 30 right now? I think top 20. He could be top 20 material if he starts fighting like not a dumbass. But I'll go with Kennedy round number two. I think he's got the ability. He's got the attributes. And, you know, Kutalaba loses to black guys except for uh, – uh, well, actually, pose a question because I was going to say he did beat that fucking killer, Khalil Roundtree. Would you take Khalil Roundtree now against Kutalaba? I don't know, man. That's a that's a it's an interesting one. That was before like Khalil Roundtree unlocked like the eighth gate of badass motherfucker. So we'll see. Main event: We've got Derek Black Beast Lewis versus Sergey Polar Bear Spivak. Hmm. Polar bears are white. Sergey Spivak is white. Uh, Derek Lewis is black. The beast that he is referencing is also black. Interesting bout. This is a race war up here, baby. So with this fight, I have I've known this fact about Derek Lewis for a long time. It, well, it's not a fact quite yet. It's a theory because there's certain X factors within that theory that could prove me wrong. But Derek Lewis, he's currently my, plus 150. Come back on Spivak, minus 175. Derek Lewis has been having a rough time as of late. He's been getting knocked out. Uh, quite easily in his last bout, uh, you know, a little bit. Like, here's the thing about his last bout against Sergei Pavlovic. He fell down. He got hit. He fell down face first. Fight got stopped. He got right back up. He was protesting it. Was it an early stoppage? Quite possibly. Uh, whose fault was it? Derek fucking Lewis's fault. I love Derek Lewis. I mean, I fucking love Derek Lewis. Check this shit out. Met the guy, signed this shit for me. Fantastic guy. He just ripped the shit out of the wall, too. But Derek Lewis is a awesome fucking dude. I spent, when I was in in, um, in Houston to meet the fucker, like, I don't drink, so I had to buy a fucking non-alcoholic Heineken just to wait for him because they, they were like, hey, dude, you can't fucking just sit here and eat peanuts I'm like, give me a non-alcoholic Heineken. Tasted like absolute fucking shit. It was worth it to meet Derek Lewis. Guy was super cool to me. It, dude's awesome, right? But with Derek Lewis, you don't fucking fall down on your face and then not expect to get the fight called off. Like, get the fuck out of here. Like, as much as like I love the guy, you don't do that shit. You, like, sim similar with Izzy, right? Like, you don't get put against the cage, duck your head get popped in the head a couple times and then lift your head up. Like what happened? I'm like, no, nah, you don't do that shit. Same thing with the uh, fucking Rodriguez and Lemos. You don't get hit once and then just stumble backwards and not keep your hands up. Even if the punches aren't landing, that body language is not good. Pisses me off, right? Like it just pisses me off when people get mad at stoppages like that. Like I've seen a similar stoppage like that in person where I was judging and I was like, get this fucking guy out of the cage. He was protesting, pushing the ref. Like, he ate some nasty punches. It was a clear stoppage. And he got pissed off, started pushing the dude. I'm like, mm. Like, I know the ref. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here, dude. Like, I, I really hope dude never fights locally here again. But uh, with this fight, the thing about Derek Lewis, he loses to strikers. Go back and look at his record. He loses to nearly every single striker that he fights. The only exceptions are, for example, Francis Ngannou, because, you know, that wasn't even a fight, and Roy Nelson, but technically speaking, Roy Nelson's more of a jiu-jitsu guy, listed as a kung fu guy. But yeah, De uh, Derek Lewis typically loses to strikers, and then he did beat that wife beater that is married to that uh, WWE star, uh, that Hawaiian fellow. Uh, yeah, he beat the shit out of him. And uh, yeah, 
typically again he he loses to strikers if you if you look recently he lost to Pavlovic striker he lost to Tavasa striker he lost to Gan obviously a striker he beat Chris Dacus, but you know that was a different story that was more of a for the people right uh Black Beast put it on that cop and then Curtis Blades here's where the the kicker is Curtis Blades is now he's getting better at, at a striker but he was primarily a wrestler he is a wrestler the best wrestler in the UFC heavyweight division what else does you know what what is what does wrestlers and Derek Lewis have in common he tends to knock him the fuck out or at least beat him Derek Lewis is hard to hold down Pavlovic he's getting better with the striking he's got a good right hand he's got power in it primarily a grappler though he's going to try to trip and hold Derek Lewis down but Derek Lewis is really hard to keep down right jiu-jitsu doesn't work on him he's going to get right back up and if he bum rushes you, you better be prepared to counter him because if you're not, you're going to get your chin knocked off. And with this fight at plus 150, I'm willing to ride or die with Derek Lewis. I know I've done it a few times. I, I did it with Pavlovic, and that didn't pan out for me. I, mean, I should have known better because like, it's my fucking theory about him losing the strikers, and Pavlovic is a striker. I just thought he'd be a lot faster than Pavlovic. In this fight, though, my biggest concern is the – the power of, of Spivak, how, how good is his power? I don't think it's like world ending. Like he doesn't hit as hard as any of these other guys. Uh, and Derek Lewis's chin, like he's been knocked out kind of harsh lately in the past. It's been TKOs where he covers up. Like his last TKO was against Cyril gone where he didn't essentially cover himself up. But that, that Tuivasa knockout next to the Sergei Pavlovic knockout, I'm worried about his chin. It's just, again, he's fighting a much younger guy. Spivak, I don't think he's going to be able to have as much success on the ground. Like, even even that washed-up loser, what's his name? Augusto Sakai was getting back up. What I think is going to happen is Derek Lewis will move forward. If he doesn't bum rush, right? If he doesn't bum rush and get him out of there quick, which is what I'm hoping for, it's going to be that he, he moves forward. Pavlovic will try to clinch up with him. Derek Lewis is essentially just going to push him off. Now, at that point, he's going to let the hands go. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if Derek Lewis tries for his own takedown. I don't think he will, though. Like, Derek Lewis and ground and pound, vicious, vicious world-ending ground and pound. Uh, so even if Spivak, say, does go for a takedown and Derek Lewis gets on top, who's a heavy guy, he just needs two clean punches and Spivak is fucking out. Uh, that's another guy, too, Volkov. Volkov, uh, he was on the way to win, and then, you know, Donald Trump called him and uh, Derek Lewis had to rep America in this hoe. So yeah, I think Derek Lewis knocks him out in the, in the first round. I think Derek Lewis needs a win bad. He's got one more in him. You know, if he cracks him clean, uh, Spivak, as we know, well, you may not know, but Spivak is kind of prone to losing the black dudes, man. He lost to Walt Harris, black dude. He uh, lost to also Marcin Tybura. Uh, the jury's out on him. And he also lost to, unfortunately, uh, who I thought was going to be the UFC champ by now, uh, Black Tom Aspinall, the blackest of them all. Yeah, Black Beast, he's going to run through Sergey Spivak, man. He's going to eat that polar bear. And uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. That's that's what I really believe. I think Black Beast has one more epic bum rush in him. And even if, say, he, he prolongs the fight, Spivak will have to come in. You know, if say it does go like over a round or over two rounds, Derek Lewis, if he's losing and he's not getting either beat up on the ground by Spivak and it, it, it looks like it's going to go maybe to a decision at that point, you still have that nuclear option of the black beast blitz. So I still think he has multiple ways to win this fight. Uh, you know, if it looks like Derek Lewis is going to lose a decision or he's just kind of getting pounded, you can still count on him to, if he survives a round to come back and just go ballistic in that, in the start of the round. So I predict him to do that in the first, maybe a little bit of a feeling out process. It also depends on how Spivak is going to react, right? There is still a mystique around Derek Lewis because he's a scary fucking guy, right? He's, he's a very intimidating guy when he's in your face like that. He's the, they're the same height. Like he's a big boy, man. He's a really big guy. So if he intimidates Sergei Spivak at all. This is like the <laughs> Sergei Sergei Spivak is like, oh no, black fellow, like bad things, you know. Um, 
that intimidation could lead to him making some like boneheaded mistakes in there. Like he's, he's got some improved striking. Like I think he's got the possibility to have success on the feet for a moment before he clinches up and goes for a takedown, which he would have to do that. He has to chain his striking into his grappling. But if he tries to clinch up with black beast, I, I really do think black beast is strong enough and powerful enough to just kind of buck him off. And at that point, that's when Derek Lewis is like, fuck this shit. And he's just going to let it go. He's going to start swanging and then banging. And at that point, Sergey Spivak is probably going to hit the deck. So I'm going to go with Lewis, round number one knockout. I still have faith in the guy. It's just the only thing I'm questioning is his chin. But again, it's not out of the ordinary for him to get knocked out by, by strikers. Spivak is a wrestler with improved striking. And yeah, I just don't think Spivak's going to have too much success with Derek Lewis. If he does, you know, it sucks. It, it shows that Derek Lewis has declined because he's he's very gifted at fighting grapplers. And uh, hopefully, like the only grappler that he that he lost and he didn't knock out was essentially a goat in D.C. So that doesn't necessarily count either. But again, I'll go with Derek Lewis by first round knockout, fucking up this polar bear white boy Spivak. But yeah, those are my predictions for this fight night. Lewis versus Spivak. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'll probably post a dumbass parlay in on Twitter. Follow the Discord. Leave a comment on that YouTube bullshit. And uh, I don't know if I kind of want to keep saying this because Olberg keeps winning. And like, granted, I kind of predicted that he would beat the shit out of uh, Nego Mariano despite me taking Nego Mariano. But, uh, yeah, fuck Oberg. How, how fucking dare he, right? How fucking dare he knock out a tough motherfucker like Nego Mariano and he can't knock out the chinniest chin in the fucking world in Fabio Chiron when I put fucking X amount of units on this cocksucker to knock him out. I'm still butthurt about that shit, man. Motherfucker.